once again sponsored by Manda Sleep, the probably perfect sponsorship for an ASMR video. Manda Sleep create amazing sleep masks as well as useful and functional sleep accessories. They have a wide range of products. I myself used to use the Amanda sleep mask which is super super comfortable and lets no light in but I now have the sleep mask pro which is just that bit more comfortable and it's it's genuinely amazing so if you want an amazing night's sleep in a super comfortable eye mask then go to the link in the description or go to mandasleep.com and use the code allsorts10 for 10% off at checkout. That's mantasleep.com and code allsorts10 for 10% off your purchase. Thank you again Mantasleep for sponsoring today's video and thank you all very much for watching. Now, let's get on with the video. Hey everybody and welcome to another ASMR video here on the channel. As you can tell, we have the return of the facts videos and more importantly, another one hour long one. So strap yourselves in, get nice and comfy, get relaxed and prepare to learn hopefully a lot more about movies. I am a massive film buff, so I'm hoping I find this super, super interesting. Well, I'm sure I will find it super, super interesting and widen my movie knowledge. But I don't think we need to ramble too much introducing things, so let's just get straight into the facts. So fact number one, we begin with Guardians of the Galaxy. Chris Pratt apparently stole his Star-Lord costume from the set for the sole purpose of having it available so he could show up in costume to visit sick children in hospital who might want to meet Star-Lord. Fact number two, the theory of everything. In an email to director James Marsh about the portrayal by Eddie Redmayne, Stephen Hawking said there were certain points where he thought he was watching himself. In addition to his copyrighted voice, Stephen Hawking also lent the filmmakers his Companion of Honor medal and his signed thesis to use as genuine props in the film. Moving on to Armageddon, NASA shows this film during their management training program. New managers are given the task of trying to spot as many errors as possible. At least 168 have been found. Dallas Buyers Club. The, film bu the film's budget was so low that the makeup budget was $250. The film's artists were able to work with that, and the film's makeup and hairstyling won an Oscar. The Godfather, still a movie, I, a movie, what was it about cows, no? I criminally still haven't seen, but it is near the top of my list, I really need to get around to it. The cat held by Marlon Brando in the opening scene was a stray that Coppola found while on the lot at Paramount and was not originally called for in the script. So content was the cat that it's purring muffled some of Brando's dialogue and as a result most of his lines had to be looped. The Matrix Kung Fu choreographer Wu Bing Yuan initially refused to work on the film and hoped that by asking for an exorbitant fee, exorbitant fee, it would turn off the Wachowskis. It didn't. He next formulated what he considered an impossible request. He said that he'd only agree if he had complete control of the fights and that he trained the actors for four months before they shoot. The Wachowskis complied with his request. In the film Elizabeth, the Golden Age, when Elizabeth arrives at St Paul's Cathedral, construction is going on. In real life, 
if some balls actually needed repair work. Director Shekhar Kapoor decided to improvise and gave the workers costumes and period tools to cut real stone that was being installed in the cathedral. The workers in the scene are real life stonemasons and construction workers. That is so cool. By the way, I have checked like the validity of the majority of these, but some false ones may escape through the cracks, so of course feel free to correct in the comments down below, but the ones I checked did turn out to be factually sound. Now Django Unchained, an amazing movie. When Calvin Candy, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, smashes his hand on the dinner table, DiCaprio accidentally crushed a small stemmed glass with his palm and really began to bleed. He ignored it, stayed in character and continued with the scene. Tarantino was so impressed that he used this take in the final cut. And when he got called cut, the room erupted into a standing ovation. Yeah, I already knew that fact before. I think I knew that back going into the movie. Just amazing. Proves why he's one of the best, if not the best. Now moving on to Boris Gump. Another brilliant movie. Tom Hanks was not paid for this film. Instead, he took percentage points, which ultimately netted him in the region of $40 million. That's, that's clever. That reminds me of, uh, was it Matt Damon? I think James Cameron offered him the lead in Avatar and offered him 10% of Avatar, and he turned it down. Titanic, after finding out that she had to be naked in front of Leonardo DiCaprio, Kate Winslet decided to break the ice, and when they first met, she flushed him. Honestly, a good idea. Schindler's List. To gather costumes for 20,000 extras, the costume designer took out advertisements seeking clothes. As economic conditions were poor in Poland, many people were eager to sell clothing they still owned from the 30s and 40s. The Chronicles of Narnia, the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Georgie Henley's reaction to Mr. Dumbness at the lamppost is genuine. She had not seen her castmate James McAvoy in his costume before the scene was filmed, so her screams and reactions were real. Georgie's first reaction to the snowy world of Narnia is also genuine. She was carried into the set blindfolded to make her first entrance, and her wide-eyed, delighted reactions to it are all entirely her own. The Dark Knight, one of the best superhero movies ever made. In preparation for his role as the Joker, Heath Ledger hid away in a motel room for about six weeks. During this extended stay of seclusion, Ledger delved deep into the psychology of the character. He devoted himself to developing the Joker's every tick, namely the voice and that sadistic sounding laugh. And I mean, it obviously paid off because it's possibly one of the greatest performances of all time. Rest in peace. John Wick Chapter 2, another movie I haven't seen. I haven't gone anywhere near the, uh, the John Wick franchise yet. Keanu Reeves performed 95% of the fight scenes himself. To prepare for the role, Keanu trained for three months. His training consisted of judo, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, marksmanship and driving. The Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring. The cast often had to fly to remote shoot locations by helicopter. Thank you, man, for that cough. Sean Bean, who played Boromir, was afraid of flying and would only do it when absolutely necessary. When they were shooting the scenes of the Fellowship crossing the snowy mountains, he'd spend two hours every morning climbing from the base of the mountain to the set near the top already dressed as Boromir. The crew being flown up could see him from the helicopters. Fair enough. Pretty woman. Good movie, bit of a guilty pleasure.
pleasure movie. Edward, played by Richard Gere, snubbing the necklace case down on Vivian's fingers was improvised by Gere, and Robert's reaction was totally natural. The filmmakers liked it so much they decided to leave it in. I love stuff like that. Interstellar, my favourite movie of all time. For a cornfield scene, Christopher Nolan sought to grow 500 acres of corn, which he learned was feasible from producing Man of Steel in 2013. The corn was then sold and actually made a profit. The Terminator. One afternoon during a break in filming, Arnold Schwarzenegger went into a restaurant in downtown LA to get some lunch, but realised all too late that he still was in a full face of Terminator makeup with a missing eye, exposed jawbone and burned flesh. Star Trek The sound of the automatic doors opening on the USS Enterprise is a Russian drain's toilet flushing. The Revenant, another fantastic movie. Leonardo DiCaprio chose to devour a raw slab of bison's liver, even though he is vegetarian. He also had to learn to shoot a musket, build a fire, speak two Native American languages, and study with a doctor who specializes in ancient healing techniques. DiCaprio calls it the hardest performance of his career, and I mean, it obviously paid off because he won an Oscar for it. Fully, fully deserved. Next up we have Jurassic Park. These sounds the Velociraptors make when communicating is the same sound tortoises make when having sex. Lovely. The Imitation Game. Benedict Cumberbatch confessed that in one of the final scenes of the film, he couldn't stop crying and had a breakdown. It was, as he said, being an actor or a person that had grown incredibly fond of the character and thinking what he had suffered and how that had affected him. I Am Legend Will Smith grew so enamoured of his canine co-star Abby that he tried to adopt her when filming was finished but the dog's trainer could not be persuaded to give her up. Man of Steel, Henry Cavill refused to take steroids to muscle up for the role. He also refused any digital touch-ups or enhancement to his body in his shirtless scenes. He said it would have been dishonest of him to use trickery while playing Superman, and he wanted to push his body to the limits develop his physique into one that was worthy of the character. I think it's probably fair to say he, he achieved that. Slumdog Millionaire Director Danny Boyle placed the money to be paid to the three lead child actors in a trust that is to be released to them upon their completion of grade school at 16 years old. The production company has set up for an auto rickshaw driver to take the kids to school every day until they are 16 years old. That's awesome. The Shawshank Redemption. Most of these facts I've literally got just to my right on, on Blu-ray. When Andy goes to the library to begin work as Brooks' assistant and Brooks' crow, Jake is squawking. Tim Robbins had to time his line, Hey Jake, where's Brooks? So that the crow wouldn't squawk over him, since the bird could not be trained to squawk on cue. Robbins was able to adapt to this and time his line perfectly by learning the bird's squawking patterns, for which writer and director Frank Darabont praised him. Robbins' improvisation is notable, as he watches the bird carefully while approaching it, waiting for it to squawk, and doesn't begin his line until after it does so. In The Martian, Matt Damon admitted that the scene where Mark was getting emotional upon 
on hearing Commander Lewis's voice was genuine. The other actors had wrapped and gone home, and their pre-recorded voices were actually being played to Damon from inside his spacesuit. When Damon began to think about how his character had been all alone on Mars for two years, alongside how he was only hearing pre-recorded voices of his co-stars, who had already finished their scenes, he began to tear up. Ridley Scott was so impressed with Damon's performance that he only did one take of the scene, which was of course used in the film. Back to Titanic, why are we? There are so many movies in existence, let's diversify. The scene set in 1912, i.e. the whole movie, except the present day scenes and the opening and ending credits have a total length of 2 hours and 40 minutes, the exact time it took for the Titanic to sink. Back to I Am Legend again. While doing a press conference in Japan for the release of the movie, Will Smith accidentally revealed the ending to a collection of entertainment reporters. <laughs> Warner Brothers asked the reporters and all those present to withhold the ending, and the reporters all obliged without any payoff or consideration. Fair play, fair play. Saving Private Ryan. What well, I think is a decent war movie, but I think it's a tad overrated, to be completely honest. Tom Sizemore was battling a drug addiction during production. Steven Spielberg gave him an ultimatum that he would be blood tested on the set every day of filming and if he failed the test once he would be fired and the part of Horvath would be recast and reshot with someone else, even if it was at the end of production. For Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot was a part of reshoots for the movie, including stunts, while being five months pregnant, a baby bump was visible, so the crew created a costume which had a green screen around her belly, which was later removed during post-production. <laughs> Into the Woods, at a Q&A session after screening of the film, James Gordon recalled an incident during rehearsals in which Meryl Streep jumped on a table and her foot got caught in her costume. She started falling backwards, head first, toward a concrete floor. Both Gordon and director Rob Marshall froze in the fear that they were about to witness the death of Meryl Streep. However, a pregnant Emily Blunt stepped in and caught Streep before she hit the floor. Wow, so they had to let a pregnant Emily Blunt step in to save the amazing Meryl Streep. Typical James Gordon standing back. Disgusting. Moving on to Maleficent. Maleficent, Maleficent, Maleficent. Angelina Jolie admitted that she scared little kids while in costume on the set of Maleficent with one kid actually saying, Mummy, please get the mean witch to stop talking to me. <laughs> she adds that her daughter Vivian, who played young Aurora, was the only child who was not scared of her. The Devil Wears Prada. On the first day of filming, Meryl Streep told Anne Hathaway, I think you're perfect for the role. I'm so happy we're going to be working together. Then she paused and followed it up with, That's the last nice thing I'll say to you. And it was. Many fashion designers allowed their clothes and accessories to be used in the film, making it the most expensively costumed film in history. I wonder if that cha that's changed now. I think this was like written four years ago or so. Fantastic beasts and where to find them. One school was obligatory for several of the cast members. The actors and actresses would attend a boot camp in order to be instructed how to move and use a wand properly. Where can I where can I sign up? Black Swan. Natalie Portman not only trained for a year as a dancer to prepare for the role, but paid for the training out of her own pocket until the film found investors. 
size and allowed himself to grow pudgy. Production was then halted for a year so he could lose 50 pounds and grow out his hair for his time spent on the deserted island. <laughs> the mummy, the mummy. Brendan Fraser nearly died during a scene where his character is hanged. Rachel Wise remembered he stopped breathing and had to be resuscitated. I'm so glad Brendan Fraser is uh, making a resurgence, making a comeback after, you know, everything he's been through. And it's a big part of my childhood, Brendan Fraser. I'm super excited to, uh, to watch The Whale. It looks amazing. Next up, we got Get Out. Amazing horror movie. Daniel Kaluuya was given the lead role on the spot after nailing his audition. Jordan Peele said Kaluuya did about five takes of a key scene in which his character needs to cry and it was so perfect that the single tear came down at the exact same time for each take. Did that really happen? The exact second? I mean, Daniel Kaluuya is an amazing actor, but the exact second? I think that's probably being a, just a tad dramatic, I don't know about you. Twelve years a slave in order to better portray an alcoholic. Michael Fassbender had his makeup artist paint his moustache with alcohol so that the other actors would react naturally to the smell as they would to a man who had been drinking heavily. In Candyman, the Bree, the Breeze, the bees were bred specifically for this movie. They needed to make sure that the bees were only 12 hours old so that they looked like mature bees but their stinger wouldn't be powerful enough to do any damage. In Iron Man, Paul Bettany was never seen in the film and is unfamiliar with the plot. He said Jarvis was the easiest job ever and it was almost like a robbery since he only worked for two hours, got paid a lot of money, then went on vacation with his wife, Jennifer Connolly. <laughs> so, in the film and trailer for Kingsman Secret Service, when the new Kingsman recruits have their first night's sleep interrupted by a deluge of water pouring into the dorm, on set the scene went horrifically wrong. As Matthew Vaughan recalls, I shouted, action. The computer got it wrong and bsh, everyone was 20 feet down underwater. Cameras, sound guys, guys were in waders full of water. Panic, everyone diving in and pulling everyone out. The set painstakingly planned and rehearsed using height markers and computer programmed water tanks washed away in a near biblical flood when the computers went rogue. Those actors weren't acting, they were absolutely terrified. Shudders Vaughan. It was awful for the first day of filming. <laughs> Moving on to Logan. Amazing movie. Sir Patrick Stewart lost £21 to play Charles Xavier as elderly and sick. Stewart claimed that he had a steady weight since he was a teenager and had never deliberately lost weight before. Prometheus, a somewhat underwhelming prequel to Alien. Composer Mark Stein, uh, Streitenfeld sorry, had the orchestra play his compositions backwards and then digitally reverse the compositions for the final film. This made the music sound unusual and unsettling, which he felt was right for the film. I think the score was pretty good for Prometheus, to be fair. Captain America, the first Avenger. Haley Atwell surprisingly touching Chris Evans' chest as he emerged from the pod upon turning into Captain America was very much improvised, and the surprise on her face is genuine as she admitted in interviews. She was very taken aback by Chris's physique and nearly broke character and ruined the take that made it into the film as a result. I bet she improvised that. Who wouldn't want to grab one of those pecs? Bridget Jones. 
Vincent's diary to prepare for the role. Renee Zellweger gained 25 pounds and then actually worked at a British publishing company for a month in preparation for the role. She adopted an alias as well as her posh accent and was apparently not recognised. On her desk in this office, she kept a framed picture of, the, of them boyfriend Jim Carrey. Workers who did not recognise her found this to be odd, but never mentioned it to her for fear of embarrassing her. Imagine, like, down the line, like a few months later, your boss is just like, oh, by the way, that weird girl had a picture of Jim Carrey on her desk. You know, that was Renee Zellweger. Like, you'd feel so stupid if you didn't recognise her. Hangover. In the hangover, Ed Helms is actually missing a tooth. He never had an adult incisor grow, and his fake incisor was taken out for part of the filming where Stu's tooth is missing. It. The Duffer brothers originally wanted to direct the movie, but were overlooked as they weren't established enough. They went on to create Stranger Things, which co-stars Finn Wolfhard and Finn Wolfhard and pays homage to Stephen King. That didn't make sense the way that was written. I I apologise on behalf of the writer of this fact. The Maze Runner. The Maze Runner. The production had to hire Snake Wranglers to make sure the areas where they were filming were snake free. Before filming began, the Wranglers found 25 venomous snakes. The biggest one they found was a 5 foot rattlesnake. 2001 A Space Odyssey Stanley Kubrick destroyed almost all of his props and sets from 2001 A Space Odyssey because he didn't want them to be used in any lesser science fiction films. It's kind of petty, but I kind of love it. Inglorious Bastards. When asked how we got into the violent baseball bat-wielding mindset of the Bear Jew, Eli Roth partially attributed his performance to the historically accurate costumes. Being in wool underwear will make you want to kill anything. He also stated that his girlfriend had secretly added some Hannah Montana music onto his iPod. When he listened to it, it inexplicably made him able to tap into the violent nature of the bear Jew. <laughs> what we do in the shadows. The man who plays Stu is not an actor, but actually Stu Rutherford. A part-time business analyst for a Wellington company, Landworks. He was hired for the film under the impression that he would be working on computers. And then he would play a small part in the film. The Social Network. During one of the depositions, it is mentioned that the invention of Facebook made Mark Zuckerberg the biggest thing on a campus that included 19 Nobel laureates, 15 Pulitzer Prize winners, two future Olympians, and a movie star. One of the lawyers then asks, who was the movie star? And the response is, does it matter? This movie star was, in fact, Natalie Borman, who was enrolled at Harvard from 1999 to 2003 and helped screenwriter Aaron Sorkin by providing him insider information about goings-on at Harvard at the time Facebook first appeared there. In The Phantom of the Opera, the doll in the Phantom's lair that is supposed to resemble Emmy Rosen is not actually a wax mold. It is Emmy Rosen. The production produced a mask of her face to use on the man 
made up like a doll with waxy makeup on, and her standing very, very still. The one for Wall Street, another one I've got down there in my collection, and one of my favourite movies of all time. The actors snorted and crushed B vitamins for scenes that involved cocaine. Jonah Hill claimed that he eventually became sick with bronchitis after so much inhaling and had to be hospitalised. I'm not really too surprised, to be honest. In Avatar, James Cameron was convinced that CGI effects had progressed enough to make this film when he saw Gollum in The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers in 2002. The Amazing Spider-Man number one. When first wearing the Spider-Man costume, Andrew Garfield admitted to shedding tears. He's the best. He is the best. Now you see me. Isla Fisher got into difficulty while filming the piranha tank scene. The top of the tank remained open so that Fisher would be able to swim to the top to get some air. There was also an emergency lever inside the tank that if pulled would alert the crew that she needed help. During one take, Fisher was running out of air and tried to swim to the top, but the chains on the handcuffs she was wearing got stuck on the bottom of the tank, so she was unable to swim to the top or pull the lever. She then attempted to alert the crew by hitting the glass of the tank. But since her character is supposed to be panicked and scared in the scene, the crew thought she was acting. She was stuck for three minutes before the stunt coordinator finally realised that something was wrong after he noticed that her handcuffs were stuck. That is crazy. The Hunger Games. On the set of The Hunger Games, Jennifer Lawrence told co-star Josh Hutcherson she could kick all the way over his head. Instead, she gave him a concussion. <laughs> in The Pianist, in order to connect with the feeling of loss required to play the role, Adrian Brody got rid of his apartment, sold his car, and didn't watch TV. James Bond, Casino Royale, Casino, Casino, Casino Royale. Daniel Craig lost the two front teeth while filming a fight scene in Prague and his dentist had to fly from London to replace them. Batman Returns. Michelle Pfeiffer said that her Catwoman costume was vacuum sealed once she was fitted into it for scenes. So she actually had only a short amount of time to perform before she would have to have it opened, or she could become lightheaded and pass out. Doesn't really seem very safe, but whatever. In Halloween, the Michael Myers face mask is just a Captain Kirk slash William Shatner face mask. They spray painted the face white, teased out the hair, and reshaped the aisle. In the clockwork orange during the filming of the Ludovico scene, star Malcolm McDowell scratched one of his corneas and was temporarily blinded. He suffered cracked ribs during filming of the humiliation stage show. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Nestle provided one. 1,850 bars of real chocolate for the movie. John Hedder was paid $1,000 to play Napoleon Dynamite. The movie grossed over $40 million in the United States. That's just quite sad. Blade Runner 2049. A visual effects company worked for a full year on the scene where Rachel appears exactly as she did 35 years ago in Blade Runner. Stand-in actress Lauren Peter acted out the 
scene and her appearance was changed through computer-generated visual effects to resemble Young. In Drive, in preparation for the role, Ryan Gosling restored the 1973 Chevy Malibu that his character uses in the film The Notebook. According to Nick Casavetes, Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams did not get along at first, and Gosling tried to have McAdams replaced. To improve the relationship between the leads, director Nick Casavetes staged an intervention by bringing them into a room where they could air all the grievances they had with each other and work something out. They soon patched over their differences, enough to become a real-life couple for some time. Moulin Rouge, the necklace worn by Nicole Kidman, was made of real diamonds and platinum and was the most expensive piece of jewellery ever specifically made for a film. The Stefano Canturi necklace was made with 1,308 diamonds, weighing a total of 134 carats, and was worth an estimated US $1 million. American Hustle According to Christian Bale, much of the movie was improvised. So, during the shooting of the film, he noted to David O. Russell, you realise that this is going to change the plot greatly down track. To which the director replied, Christian, I hate plots. I'm all about characters. That's it. Les Miserables Hugh Jackman lost considerable weight and went 36 hours without water, causing him to lose water weight around his eyes and cheeks, giving him the gaunt appearance of a prisoner. He also grew a real scraggly beard for scenes of Valjean as a prisoner. Through mercifully, they were shot first, though mercifully they were shot first in production, and he could shave and return to his usual weight for scenes playing Valjean as a wealthy man. Poltergeist. During the scene where Robbie is being strangled, the clown's arms became extremely tight and Robin started to choke. When he screamed out, I can't breathe, Steven Spielberg thought that the boy was ad-libbing and just instructed him to look at the camera. <laughs> when Spielberg saw Robin's face turning purple, he ran over and removed the clown's arms from Robin's neck. I think I've actually got another fact off the top of my head about Poltergeist. I believe the skeletons in the movie were actually real-life skeletons. I've probably completely messed that up, but I'm pretty sure that's true. The Fault in Our Stars Shailene Woodley cut her waist-long hair, which she needs for her role as dress in Insurgent, to a page boy haircut and was not able to wear a wig. She donated the hair to a local children's hospital that makes wigs for the kids. Birdman Given the unusual style of filming long takes, Edward Norton and Michael Keaton kept a running tally of flubs made by the actors and actresses. Emma Stone made the most mistakes. Zach Galifianakis made the fewest. Interesting. He actually did mess up a few lines during the filming, but played his mistakes off well enough that the shots were included in the film. I feel like a lot of these facts have been... It ended up being in the final film. Interview with the Vampire... The Vampire Chronicles. All the actors playing vampires were required to hang upside down for up to 30 minutes at a time during the makeup application. This would force all the blood in their bodies to rush to their heads, causing the blood vessels in their faces to bulge out. The makeup artists would then trace over the swollen veins, creating the eerie, translucent, skinned vampire look. Unfortunately for the actors, they would have to repeat the process several times over 
as the blood would quickly drain from their heads. This, in part, accounts for the lengthy makeup process. Gone Girl, one of those films I would love to watch again for the first time. It's not really a, a repeat watch film. Production of the movie had to be shut down for four days due to Ben Affleck's refusal to follow David Fincher's vision and wear a New York Yankees cap for a scene where Affleck's character Nick is at an airport. <laughs> the Bostonian actor said to Fincher, David, I love you. I would do anything for you, but I will not wear a Yankees hat. Eventually, the two settled for Ben's character to wear a Mets cap. Fincher jokingly describes Affleck's actions of this as entirely unprofessional in the DVD's audio commentary. I personally love <laughs> the commitment to his team. That was awesome. Inception, another amazing movie with possibly my favourite piece of music ever. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, Christopher Nolan explained that he based roles of the Inception team similar to roles that are used in theme filmmaking. Cobb is the director, Arthur is the producer, Ari Ariadne, is that her name? Ariadne? Ariadne? I can't remember how they say her name in the movie. Anyway, is the production designer, uh, Eames is the actor, Sato is the studio. And Fisher is the audience. In trying to write a team based creative process, I wrote the one I know, said Nolan. Makes sense, makes sense. The Grand Budapest Hotel. Dilda Swinton spent five hours in the makeup chair to play 84 year old Madame D. We're not usually working with a vast, Bruckheimer type budget on my films. So often we're trying a work around, said Wes Anderson. But for the old age makeup, I just said, let's get the most expensive people we can. In Lara Croft Tomb Raider, filming the scenes where Lara drives her Land Rover through the jungle, there had to be endless reshoots due to snakes and other wildlife falling through the open rooftop. <sighs> Angelina Jolie herself was reported to be terrified. As she would be, fair enough. Pulp Fiction. The shot of Vincent plunging the syringe into Mia's chest was filmed by having John Travolta pull the needle out, then running the film backwards. Watch carefully and you'll see a mark on Mia's chest disappear when she's revived. Star Wars The Last Jedi, the best Star Wars movie ever. After first completing the arduous 600 foot climb on Ireland's Skellig Michael Island, Mark Hamill had hoped that he could avoid having to repeat the trek for additional scenes if he could somehow remain on the summit overnight, thus forfeiting the luxury of room service at his hotel. He suggested sleeping in a tent and staying in character. However, after some inquiries were made with the Irish authorities, he was told by producer Kathleen Kennedy that he was not permitted to pitch a tent because the location is a protected UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Departed Jack Nicholson Paul real gun on Leo DiCaprio in The Departed, even though it wasn't in the script. He thought the scene wasn't intense enough before. Sunshine. Gillian Murphy worked with leading physicist Brian Cox to learn all about advanced physics. This included touring the CERN facility in Switzerland and learned to copy physicists' mannerisms. Murphy ended up copying some of Cox's personal idiosyncrasies, such as his frequent hand movements. The actor also studied Henry George's cl 
Wowzos. Classic The Wages of Fear, 1953. To have an understanding of the types of suspense that Danny Boyle was attempting to create. Murphy has claimed that his involvement in Sunshine converted him from agnosticism to atheism. Oh, well, that's great. <laughs> Nightcrawler. This, I actually watched Nightcrawler for the first time literally probably like a month ago and I can't believe I didn't watch it sooner. It's easily in my top 10 movies of all time. There's something horrifying but also kind of cozy and comforting about it. Um, and Jake Gyllenhaal is just incredible. During the scene where Jake Gyllenhaal screams at himself in the mirror, Gyllenhaal got so into the scene that the mirror cracked, cutting his hand. He had to go to hospital for 14 stitches, returning to the set after being discharged. The Passion of the Christ. Jim Gabietto admitted he was struck by lightning while filming the Sermon on the Mount and during the crucifixion. What? That is crazy. Or he could just be lying for like a bit of promo for the film. Snow White and the Huntsman. The drops of blood at the beginning of the film are drops of real blood from director Rupert Sanders. Sanders felt the fake blood looked too unrealistic, so he pricked his finger to get the shots he wanted. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Down No Dale. Being produced as Johnny Depp was going through a bitter divorce from his wife and the herd. He was chronically late to the set to the point where it ate into the schedule, as the set often came to a halt for hours at a time. It got to the point where a production assistant was hired just to wait outside Depp's house and announce that he was awake when they saw the lights had come on. <laughs> Cloud Atlas. While on the set of this movie, Tom Hanks started calling Lana Wachowski and Lily Wachowski mum and dad because they worked so well together and as leaders of the cast and crew. The Great Gatsby. According to Tom Breen, the owner of property Breenold in the Blue Mountains where a lot of the filming took place, was a huge stuff up on set by a private weather guru who was hired by Baz Luhrmann. Mr. Breen claims that on a beautiful spring day, the crew purchased 100,000 litres of water from one of the dams to create the synthetic rain needed for the scene where a nervous Gatsby has Nick Carraway invite Daisy over for tea. It then rained for the next three days. <laughs> Million Dollar Baby Hilary Swank contracted a bacterial infection from a blister she developed on her foot during training for the role. The infection was so serious that she almost had to be hospitalised for three weeks. Catching the infection in the nick of time, she instead chose to take a week off for medicated rest and didn't tell Clint Eastwood or the other producers of the film about the injury because she didn't believe it was in character. That is commitment. In Boyhood, Richard Linklater cast his daughter Lorelai Linklater as Samantha because she was always singing and dancing around the house and wanted to be in his movies. At about the third or fourth year of filming, she lost interest and asked for her character to be killed off. Link later refused, saying it was too violent for what he was playing. Lorelai eventually regained her enthusiasm and continued with the project, i.e. probably offered more money. Ex Machina Throughout the film, as red, blue, and green are prominently displayed in each scene. This is a nod to the RGB colour model, which is 
Dropped a second early to get his true reaction to falling from the Nakatomi Plaza in Die 
Christian Bale based elements of his performance as Patrick Bateman on Tom Cruise after seeing an interview with the star. According to Mary Harren, Bale said he saw this very intense friendliness with nothing behind the eyes. Orson Welles directed much of Citizen Kane from a wheelchair after injuring himself on set. Shooting for No Country for Old Men was interrupted for a day due to a smoke cloud from the set of There Will Be Blood, which was also filming in the area. The sirens heard in the casino scene in Swingers were police on their way to stop the filmmakers who were shooting without a permit. Executive producer of Toy Story and chief Pixar shareholder Steve Jobs picked Bob Dylan as his first choice to write and perform the soundtrack to the film over Randy Newman. In order to credibly portray a rock band, the members of Stillwater Inn Almost Famous rehearsed for four hours a night, five nights a week for six weeks. Franz Ferdinand were the original choice to play the band at the Hogwarts Yule Ball. Enya was James Cameron's first choice to compose the music for Titanic. The name of the band isn't mentioned once in the Beatles' first feature, A Hard Day's Night. Arty charcoal pick of Kate Winslet's boobs in Titanic, drawn by one James Cameron. <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho was the first American film to show a toilet flushing. South Park, bigger, longer and uncut, only uses the F word. 199 times. <laughs> the childish snickering during the usual suspects iconic lineup was genuine, caused by Benicio del Toro's persistent flatulence. Fair enough. The Dark Knight made more money in its first six days in the US than Batman Begins made in its entire domestic run. Worldwide ticket sales for the Saw franchise put it at just shy of a billion dollars, making it the highest earning horror franchise globally. Within three days of release, The Hunger Games has become the highest grossing film for production company Lionsgate. Again, I wonder if that's still the case, because this article may be, may be a little bit dated. In 1982, Spielberg's kids' classic stayed in the top US 10 for 10 months. That's about E.T. Often described as a mega flop, Waterworld actually took home nearly 90 million dollars more in worldwide box office than its estimated budget. After his character was shot in the foot by Joe Pesci in Goodfellas, Michael Imperioli's Christopher got fictional retribution by shooting a baker in the foot in The Sopranos. His kiss of line, it happens. Born star Ron Jeremy can clearly be seen watching the events come to a climax, <laughs> bracket sorry, in the finale of Ghostbusters. The real Frank Ab Abagnale Jr. appears in Catch Me If You Can, I just butchered that name because I was just reading it in autopilot night, appears in Catch Me If You Can as the French policeman who arrests Leo. The Alien series has a continued obsession with alphabetizing their androids chronologically. Ash, Bishop, Cal. Could Michael Fassbender's David be an andro android in the upcoming Prometheus? 
Spoiler alert, yes. Although as it's a prequel, it should really be Zeus or Zola or Zebedee. Yeah, that is that is a fair point, actually. <laughs> the check the dude fills out at Ralph's in the Big Lebowski is dated September 11th, 1991. On the supermarket TV, George Bush Sr. calls out Saddam Hussein over the invasion of Drive director Nicholas Winding Revan Revan failed his driving test eight times. <laughs> the cigarette smoked by Sigourney Weaver in Avatar is completely CGI. And the final fact let's find a good one. Oh, yeah, let's end with Inglorious Bastards. Christoph Waltz, the man who won an Oscar for playing the Jew Hunter in Inglorious Bastards, has a son who is a rabbi. Wow. I actually thought Christopher Waltz was uh, better in Django Unchained, personally. I loved his character in Django Unchained. But I think, if my calculations are correct, I think that should more or less be one hour done and dusted if it is a little short. Then I apologise, one hour will still probably be in the title for those keywords. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully we've got over, over that mark, but I really hope you did enjoy this video. Let me know what other nice, relaxing, one hour long videos you'd like to see cover. I don't, I'm not sure if that sentence made sense, but what topics you'd like to see covered in longer videos whether it be facts or history um, or his history facts again let me know down in the comments down below but there shouldn't be too many comments on this video because you should be falling asleep or at least very very relaxed fingers crossed if I've, if I've done my job properly but I'm gonna call it there guys for this video, thank